of the peripheral nervous system, which is the PNS, also known as the TNS. There are two nerves in the forebrain, the olfactory the nerve, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibular, cochlear, glossopharyngeal, glossopharyngeal vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. Really sensory, which means afferent, or they can be motor, which means efferent, or there can be mixed ones. Um, a few nerves are unique, but most of the nerves have some sort of function or overlap in function. Um, the olfactory nerve, commonly referred to as CN1, is purely sensory. Um, it controls smell um, or olfaction and consists of fascicles or bundles of axons arising from the olfactory receptor cells and damage to this nerve can cause an impaired sense of smell. So imagine not being able to smell those roses. <laughs> Cranial nerve 2, or commonly referred to as CN2, it's purely sensory, which and it controls vision. Um, it consists of axons and ganglions, of, ganglion cells found in the retina. Damage to this nerve can cause blindness in the visual field, so you won't be able to see if you damage this nerve. Um, oculomotor is commonly referred to as CN3. It's a motor nerve and it's considered the eye mover. Um, it's responsible for eye movement, of course, opening the eyelid, constriction of the pupil, and focusing. Um, damage can cause drooping eyelids, uh, dilated pupil, double vision, difficulty focusing, and the inability to move the eye in certain directions. Then there's the trochlear nerve, which is commonly referred to as CM4. It's a motor nerve. Trochlear means pulley. Uh, somatic motor to the superior oblique muscles of the eye. Damage to this nerve can cause double vision and the inability to rotate the eye inferolaterally, which means below and to one side. Um, Nerve 5 is the trigeminal nerve and it's commonly referred to as CN5. It's the largest cranial nerve. Um, it's both sensory and motor. It splits into three divisions, ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. Damage to this nerve results in loss of sensation or impaired chewing. So not being able to do that. Um, Cranial nerve 6 is the abducens nerve. It's commonly referred to as CN6. It's a motor nerve. Um, moves the eyeballs outwards by sending nerve impulses to the lateral rectus muscles. Damage to this nerve may result in the inability to rotate the eye laterally. It may also cause the eye to rotate medially when at rest. So, yep, that'll happen. Uh... Cranial nerve 7 is a facial nerve. It's commonly referred to as CN7. It's sensory and motor, somatic and parasympathetic, closes the eye. Uh, motor, it's facial expression, salivary tear, and tear glands, as well as nasal and palatine glands. Sensory, taste on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. There's five branch branches, temporal, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, and cervical. Damage to their nerve cause sagging facial muscles and disturbed sense of taste. No sweet and salty. So no enjoying kettle corn. That would suck. Uh, number eight is vestibular cochlear nerve and it's commonly referred to as CN8. Sensory nerve, two branches, vestibular and cochlear. Imagine that. Vestibular and controls the sense of equilibrium and cochlear is the sense of hearing. Damage to this nerve produces deafness, uh, dizziness, nausea, loss of balance, and um, nystagmus. Uh, we've got cranial nerve number nine, which is glossopharyngeal nerve, commonly referred to as CN9. Mixed sensory and motor, responsible for swallowing, salvation, gagging, control of blood pressure and respiration, and sensation for the posterior one-third of the tongue. Um, damage to this nerve can <coughs> result in impaired swallowing and the loss of bitter and sour tastes. So there goes sweet, or er, there goes sour patch kids. 
cranial nerve 10 is the vagus nerve and it's the only cranial nerve to extend beyond the head and the neck. It's sensory and motor, visceral, sensory for thoracic and abdominal viscera, somatic swallowing, parasympathetic lungs, heart lungs, abdominal organs, influences the heart rate, breathing, and digestive activity, so your tummy. Um, responsible for swallowing, speech, and the regulation of the viscera. So I probably wouldn't be able to make this video without my vagus. Nerve. Um, damage to this nerve can result in hoarseness, loss of voice, impaired swallowing, and is fatal if both sensory and motor are cut. And it's a motor nerve. It's unique because it arrives from the ventral rootlets of C1 through C5 spinal cord levels, responsible for swallowing, head, neck, and shoulder movements. So, do you want all of this stuff? Damage to this nerve causes impaired head, neck, and shoulder movements. The head usually turns toward the injured side, largely involved in the head and neck movements. And last but not least, the hypoglossal nerve is the cranial nerve 12, commonly known as CN12. It's motor, responsible for tongue movement, for speech, food manipulation, and swallowing. So, all of that business. Um, damage to this nerve can result in tongue deviation towards the injured side. Damage to both nerves can result in the tongue protrusion. Uh, so that is the 12 cranial nerves summed up.